Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and this is C++ from Scratch. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about iterators. So iterators provide this general way of iterating over or traversing our standard template library containers. And one of the primary places where we use these um, iterators is when interacting with our standard template library algorithms. So with our iterators, we can define, say, a range of values. So we can say from the beginning of a container to the end of the container, we can pass that range using iterators to a standard template library algorithm, which will perform some algorithm on that range of values. Now, another thing that our iterators do is they lay out, say, a set of requirements. So we can't use, say, every single kind of iterator. So we have multiple kinds of iterators. We can't use every single kind with every single standard template library algorithm. So for example, right, we have, you know, our container like a std array, right, our, our old friend there. Um, we can, of course, call std sort um, or standard sort um, our sorting algorithm on a std array. But we can't say sort uh, an unordered container. So something like um, a std unordered map. So another thing that these iterators do is they set kind of the foundation of, you know, where we can use certain kinds of iterators and where we can use certain kinds of containers with respect to our standard template library algorithms. Okay, so what we're going to be looking at today as an example is kind of the basics of how we can iterate over one of these containers using these um, iterators. And we're going to be using our old friend std array for this. So when we first looked at this, uh, uh, this container, we kind of skipped over this iterator section where we have these methods say begin, end, r begin, and r end. So we're gonna be looking at those today in more detail. So let's go ahead and get started and we'll create a new uh, source file. So something like iterator.cpp. Uh, and because we're using our std array, we'll include our array header and I'll go ahead and include IO stream so we can print out some values as well. Okay. And then of course we can have um, our main function, right? The core of all of our C++ applications. So what we'll do starting out is of course, just create, creating some array that we want to iterate over. So we'll create say a std array of five integers. We'll call it something like my array. And, you know, we'll just set the contents to, you know, some numbers, right? Maybe we'll just do ascending one, two, three, four, and five, right? Something simple. So we'll save that. Now, one of the ways in which we can use iterators is of course, just, you know, manually uh, you know, iterating, iterating over the uh, values inside of, say, a container. And we can do that with a, a for loop. Um, so instead of using something like a range-based for loop, we're going to use that more C-style syntax, except instead of manually specifying the bounds using, say, integers, we're going to specify the bounds using these iterators. So the first part, right, of our for loop syntax is we have some sort of initialization, right, uh, usually of some kind of loop counter. So instead of doing something like int i uh, is equal to zero here to specify the start of you know our array, we'll go ahead and use auto iter. So we'll just use itr to abbreviate iter is equal to my array dot begin. Right. So we're already being a bit more expressive here instead of you know saying you know some integer i is equal to zero. We're saying okay, we have some iter variable, and we're setting that to be the beginning of my array. So very expressive compared to just having say zero. Then we have some sort of condition that we're going to check inside of our loop. So we want to keep running this loop until we run out of elements. So we want to make sure that our iterator is less than my array dot end, right? So again, instead of you know checking something like the capacity of our array and making sure that we're not indexing past the end of our array, we're saying, I want to keep running this loop uh, while my iterator is less than um, the iterator at the end of this array, right? So you can see here our begin method returns an iterator to the beginning of our std array, and our end method returns an iterator to the end of our array, right? So very expressive. And then finally, right, we have some sort of like increment or decrement that we typically have with our loop counter. So in this case, we'll do exactly the same thing. We'll do iter plus equals one here. So we're just saying I want to progress my iterator by one position inside of my container, right? So I'm just going to add one um, and, you know, that just symbolically meaning that I want to go to the next element. So I want to progress, say, from one to two, then on the next loop iteration from two to three, three to four, and so on and so forth. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the body of this for loop now. 
And let's say we just want to print out the contents uh, of this array. So of course, we're going to use something like std cout. But what are we going to print out here, right? This type of iter, right? This is, uh, you know, this is a std array iterator, right? This isn't a value that we can just directly print. So how do we access the value underneath an iterator, right? An iterator is this higher level of abstraction, right? We're iterating over the contents of something. So how do we access the underlying value? Well, we use the star operator for that. So we'll use something like star iter to access the value underneath an iterator. So here we're accessing the integer underneath my iterator for my array of integers. Okay. And then, of course, we'll print, say, something like a space afterwards. So we'll, we'll print out all of the elements in an array separated by a space. And then at the very end, we'll do something like std cout with a new line character so that we get a new line afterwards. Okay, so let's kind of just run through the basics of what we did here again. So first, we just created an array. Then we created a for loop. And the bounds for our for loop we set using iterators. So we said, you know, we want to start with, you know, iter is equal to the beginning of our array. And we use that myArray.begin method to get that iterator to the beginning of our array. Our condition that we check each iteration of the loop is we just want to make sure that our current iterator is less than the iterator that we get when we call myArray.end, right? So we want to make sure we're not at the end of our array. And then every iteration of our loop, we want to just progress our iterator by one. So we want to move to the next value. Okay. So let's go ahead and save this and let's go ahead and compile and run this and see what we get. So we'll go ahead and run G++ on iterator.cpp. It will just call the output executable, something like iterator. Then you can see we have our executable now and we can go ahead and run this. So we can run iterator and we get what we expect, right? We print out our array element by element, starting from one, going all the way up to five. Not so surprising, but um, we can see how we were able to specify that value, uh, that range of values using our iterators instead of manually doing it through integers. Now, another thing we can do here is we can use our other kind of iterators that um, our std array supports, which are these reverse iterators. So sometimes we want to um, iterate over a you know an array in reverse. So we don't want to go from the beginning to the end. We want to go from the end to the beginning. Now, if you were just manually specifying this range with integers, it would be a little bit annoying because we'd have to change, you know, you know, more or less everything inside of this for loop. We would have to, you know, change, you know, the start of our array to be, you know, the capacity minus one of our array, um, or rather the size minus one of our array. Um, we would have to make sure that our condition, uh, you know, we're checking to make sure that our position is greater than uh, or equal to zero. And then we would have to, you know, subtract rather than increment right here, every iteration of the loop. But we can do it very simply with our iterators, especially because our container supports these reverse iterators. All I need to do is change begin and end to our begin and our end. And everything will work as expected. We'll now, you know, print out this array in reverse. So without making any other changes, I'll just uh, minimize this. I'll recompile iterator.cpp and we'll run it. And now you can see that we get 54321 instead of 12345. So let's go ahead and see kind of how this works um, and how we can be a lot more expressive using iterators. So here our array definition exactly the same. But now we're saying inside of the bounds of our for loop, I want my starting iterator to, the be to be the beginning, or rather this reverse iterator beginning of this array. So we can see that our begin over here returns a reverse iterator to the beginning. So it's the beginning of our array if we're iterating over this container in reverse. So we're starting at something like five, right, instead of one. And then our end is roughly the same thing, but it's a reverse iterator and it's the end, right? But it's the end if we're iterating over this container uh, in reverse. So we're going from five down to one now instead of one up to five. And all we really need to change was using our begin and our end instead of begin and end, right? So we can be very expressive and you know it, it saves us a lot of hassle of changing things like loops and worrying about bounds and making sure we got all that logic correctly implemented. Now, one final thing uh, to note here is that we don't always have to iterate over our entire range of values here. If you were just going to iterate over our entire range of values, it's oftentimes better to just use a range-based for loop. 
but we can set offsets here into what elements we want to access. So instead of starting from, say, our begin, right, we can start from our begin plus one, so a one offset from our reverse iterator um, at the beginning of that, that sequence. So instead of starting at five here, now we're starting at four. If I did plus two, instead of starting at four, we're starting at three, um, and so on and so forth. So you can see here, if I use a two offset for our begin, and I go ahead and recompile iterator and run it, it just prints out three, two, one, right? Because I started with a two offset here from our begin. So one, two. Likewise, you can do the exact same thing with say begin and end, right? So we can just get rid of our begin and our end and iterate it, uh, iterate over you know front to back of this array, and let's just do an offset of one here. So instead of starting at begin, which is one, we're going to start at two here, right? Which is begin plus one. Okay. So we'll go ahead and compile and run this again, and you can see we print out two, three, four, five instead of that entire range. So this is how we can kind of play around and get a subset of say a container that we might want to pass to something like an STL algorithm. Okay, so that's going to go ahead and do it for today. That's roughly the basics of you know how we use iterators uh, and how we can think about iterators in C++. I'll of course provide links to this std array and this iterator library uh, page from cppreference.com. And you can of course find any uh, of this and uh, the other examples I've gone through at github.com slash coffee before arch. But that's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.